Namaste, this is Tariq Fatah again with an episode of What to Fatah. And as usual, <clears throat> time may pass, weeks may pass, a year may go by. But the whole issue of what is Islamophobia and uh, why there should be uh, laws against it is always a burning issue. The funny thing is some of the most uh, haters of Western civilization, people who wish to destroy the West uh, and uh, dream of having a Sharia-based ummat or a Khalifa uh, across the world, are the ones who most uh, vocally come out and say, well, uh, there is too much Islamophobia and they seem to be winning. Now, <laughs> some of the most Islamist organizations in Canada are getting government funding. The Muslim Association of Canada has been chosen as a group that will, uh, has been given money to fight Islamophobia. But the question, some of my uh, non-Muslim friends, or even some of the uh, uh, Muslims who, which are the majority, who do not follow any Islamist organization, they ask, well, shouldn't we first agree on what is Islam before we agree? that there is Islamophobia, that we have to fight it. What if you're fighting Islamophobia and getting funding for it, but you are using that money to attack ordinary Muslims who do not wish to be part of your uh, political agenda of imposing Sharia in, say, Canada or India or wherever you are a minority and um, claim to be victimized? That's the problem. Since our childhood, we've been told that there are 72 different versions of Islam. And uh, uh, each one considers the other as not Islam. As my father used to say, if 71 of them are wrong, what guarantee is that the, uh, the last one surviving is right? Because we have been killing each other, Muslims killing each other since the time of the Prophet's family. I mean, we talk about the tragedy of Aboriginal children being killed and the unmarked graves being found. And some of these uh, Islamist organizations in Canada have made a big boo-ha-ha. They want to be more loyal than the king. And they say, Canada's flag should be burnt. We should not celebrate Canada Day because our founding fathers, as uh, the term goes, uh, exterminated and killed uh, Aboriginal First Nations or Indigenous uh, children who were who were taken to church-based uh, schools, the Catholic Church being primary among them, and buried them when they died. Sometimes three, four-year-olds would simply be dumped in unmarked graves. Fair enough, I say. Good for you. But aren't you the guys who killed the children of the Prophet? and cut off their heads, grandchildren, and kicked it around in Damascus. I think this is some reckoning <laughs> that has to take place. We're OK by chopping off the head of the grandson of the prophet, kick it around like a football in a mosque that was actually a church in Damascus, then invade everything else, establish an Islam which was based on what the enemies of Prophet Muhammad said. And then you had another Islam that came through the Abbasids, a third that came from the Fatimites, all killing each other, all destroying everything that is. Then there was one brief time in, in Spain and in Andalusia where enlightenment grew. And there too, you got divided into 26 different factions who fought each other and then ran away from Spain after plundering it. So should we not first come to an agreement as to what is this religion before we say that somebody is against it? You can't agree on it in Yemen. You can't agree on what is Islam in Syria. You can't agree uh, what it is in the Indian subcontinent. Have you forgotten how many children you killed in Bangladesh? As 
Pakistani Muslim soldiers of God raped 100,000 women. 10 million were killed. You couldn't agree on which Islam was right or wrong. Was that Islamophobia? Was it Islamophobia when Arab Janjaweed were massacring black African Muslim Darfuris? No, we don't need that. We invoke Islamophobia wherever we are a minority to play the victim, to try to get sympathy. But the moment we get into majority power, we do exactly what we condemned. So for heaven's sake, before you determine what is Islamophobia and make laws about it, and I'm addressing politicians in countries like Canada and India, where the mainstream sometimes bends over backwards to try to accommodate. I'll just give you an example. A Muslim man in the city of Toronto killed a police officer, ran him over. Famous style of killing trucks and cars running over other people. It's been copied against us as well, tragically enough, in London, Ontario. Do you think the paper even mentioned the fact? Had it been the other way around? If someone had run over a Muslim activist, what would the news be? Front pages do not mention the fact. They briefly mention the name. And one can easily tell it's a Pakistani name because they are some of the few Muslims who do not know how to keep names. This is very interesting. They usually involve two first names and put it together and that becomes a name but that's a story for another day not a single muslim organization that had been crying victimhood has uttered a single word of condemnation yet no we want to preserve the protection that come by crying victim all the time, no matter what we are, where we go, we are victims. We are victims when the Mughals ruled us. We are victims when they were thrown out. Our job is to be victims and never aspire to tell the truth. Maybe I'm exaggerating. Maybe they're not, I'm not speaking all Muslims. A lot of my friends, myself included, we are quite open about the flaws. And the possible remedy there is, but the deceived, uh, devious nature of trying to hide behind uh, laws that would protect us from Islamophobia when we don't know what is the right Islam. When Crown Prince Muhammad bin Salman takes the entire hadith out of the uh, Islamic theology and says, we don't know if it's right or wrong. So I would discard it. Not one person utters a single word against Crown Prince Muhammad bin Salman. He's very rich, very powerful. I will not fight against him. The moment it is someone weak, a woman who doesn't want to wear a hijab or a burqa, then we become superior and order her around, who to marry, what to do, where to go, when to go. What does it tell us? We don't belong to societies which have bypassed or gone beyond the Industrial Revolution. We are not, either we are unfit to live in secular parliamentary democracies as citizens of that country, and aspire to have an ummah-based uh, khilafat which rules over the world, which each of them, when the mics are shut and the video cameras are off, openly admit that that is the deep desire. But as soon as the first microphone goes on, they switch to another story. These are very clever people. But the fatwas, from fatwa Rizvi and all that, they tell the whole story. I'm especially talking about the Muslims from the Indian subcontinent. I don't see many Turks running around in Toronto crying uh, victim, or even Arabs, 
or uh, Iranians, but the Pakistanis and the Indian, especially the North Indian Muslims, they are obsessed with this notion that if we are not the victims, we are going to lose our privileges. So instead of changing our ways to allay the fears of those who are our neighbors, that no, we do not store bombs in our home. No, we do not all beat up our wives and daughters. We go out of the way to live with neighbors who do the same thing so that nobody else can uh, point out the fact that most assault, most cases in our court system here, Toronto, come in areas where South Asians live, are domestic assault. How does this happen? But I'm wavering away from the fact. I simply want to leave a thought with you. As long as you don't know who is the right Muslim out of the 72 versions that are out there, it's very strange. The 72 versions, and then there are 72 virgins as well. I don't know where the number 72 comes from. However, as long as we cannot agree what it is, we can't complain that there are people fearful of it. So as a first step, could you all, the mullahs and the hijabis and niqabis and whatever political form of Islam that you have brought to the shores of Canada and the rest of wherever you are a minority, even the US or India, please come to an agreement as to what it is. Please tell us how putting a piece of cloth, the flag, political flag of the Muslim Brotherhood on your head is a marker of piety. I just can't understand. There's nothing on your head except a bald head and hair. The hair itself is a natural God's gift from human being to protect from the sun rays and all that. You don't need an extra. Otherwise, God would have made our heads that way with the skin over it. No, don't politicize your religion and walk around like a flag of another country, teasing your hosts and then claiming that if they object, like in Quebec, they said, if you wear religious attire on your head or wherever, whether you're Sikh, Jew or Muslim or Catholic, no, you cannot be in the police, you cannot be in the government service, you're free to do whatever you wish to do. Most jobs are in the private sector. Go, do it over there. But you protest that, and then you come over and say, no, 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 this is our religion. This is not politics. But for heaven's sake, stop lying to us. We know what the Muslim Brotherhood is. We, not who, we know who Sayyid Qutb is. Maybe there's plenty of white guilt the original residents of this country, the aboriginals, the First Nations, and then those people who came and created the state, the dominion of Canada, they might not know what our aspiration is. But if we had a Khilafat here, the aboriginal people would not even exist. Because the aboriginal people in Iran don't exist, and Egypt don't exist, and in Arabia, the people of their original religion are vanished. We even invaded in the year 636 the territories of the Jews and then claimed that they are occupying it. So let us learn from our own history. Be ashamed of what we have done to numerous places on earth and stop whimpering around saying we need laws to protect us from Islamophobia. You are the Islamophobes. You are the ones who create the fear of, of uh, Islam in the hearts of people. If it was for me, I would say Islam is fundamentally a simple act of clearing your neighbor's snow during a snowstorm. That person would say, oh, that's a nice guy. Well, I'm a Muslim. But no, <laughs> you some of the people who would Blame other people for what's happening everywhere around. You still don't believe that 9-11 was done by Muslims. You still in closed homes say, no, it was a Jewish conspiracy. 
and stop telling me that you don't, because that's a lie as well. So for heaven's sake, if you want to fight Islamophobia, if at all, please come to a decision and say, are Ahmadis Muslims? Are the Shia Muslim? Are the Ismailis Muslims? Are the Kurds Muslim? Are the Baloch Muslim? Bengalis Muslim? You suddenly find out that between the Houthis and the Yemenis, uh, after all, the Houthis are also Yemenis, they're all Muslim, but they just can't agree which one of them is the right Muslim. I think in a prelim preliminary game of elimination, you first have to come to a stage where you come say, yes, we've gone through like the UEFA Cup and all that elim uh, elimination round. Now we're going to play the finals. And then you claim discrimination or not. Right now, you are killing fellow Muslims and blaming the West or blaming the Yahud or the Hanud, which is the Hindu, and absolving yourself and saying, no, please, 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 please. We are victims. We are victims. Help us. Help us. Nobody's going to help you because you killed the Prophet's chief grandchildren. You think that that sin, if at all you believe you're a Muslim, will be forgiven? And then you welcomed those killers into India as Muhammad bin Qasim and said, ah, oh, the first uh, 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 symbol of Islam came upon Hindustan. A man involved in the destruction of the Kaaba the, in Mecca came to invade you and you welcomed him and you're a Muslim. Oh, for heaven's sake, please, 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 just clear your neighbor's snow. And they will think you are a good person. Okay? Until next time, see you again. Take care. Khuda Hafiz.